In this example, we're just going to identify some of the forces. So that means just labelling what type of forces are acting on certain objects. The first one, we have a hockey ball, which is rolling across a 2G hockey pitch. Now, if it's rolling along, this arrow just shows the velocity of that ball. But once it's rolling, there's no driving force keeping it going. Instead, there's only going to be a force which is slowing it down, which is in the opposite direction to its motion. So if the ball is moving this way, there's going to be a friction force acting the other way. And this is going to be friction between the ball and the ground and also perhaps some air resistance as well. Now the other forces which are acting on this ball which is on the ground, there's going to be its weight which is acting downwards and uh, counteracting this weight what stops it falling through the actual hockey pitch itself is that that pitch is pushing upwards with what we call the normal contact force. So they're the forces which are acting on that ball as it's rolling along. The other example uh, is if we have a boat which is moored in a harbour. So if it's moored in the harbour, it means it's not actually travelling along, it's just sort of pretty much sitting still on top of that water. And now for this, um, there's going to be a downwards force, which is due to its weight. And what you'll find is that in sort of 99% of the times, the downwards force is always going to be caused by the weight, which is the mass of an object uh, in a gravitational field. Um, but what's stopping it sinking? Well, as this is underwater, what it's doing is displacing some of that water, and that means the force acting upwards is actually called up thrust. So the boat, nice and static, in the harbour, you've got the weight acting down, uh, and that's equal in size and opposite in direction to the up thrust, which is stopping it sink.